Hello and welcome to No Walls. I'm Ayana and before Pastor Lee brings the word, I want to remind you that this is Black History Month and the month of love. Show someone love this week with a simple act of kindness. It'll not just brighten their day, it'll brighten yours too. And if you don't know what love is, remember, it can be found in 1 Corinthians 13. Again, welcome to No Walls. We're very glad that you're here. Welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the studies. <laughs> are being obedient. Welcome and to No Walls. This is my first people, never video. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I am so excited to be back and I'm excited to have you worshiping with us this Sunday. Happy Sunday goes out to my sailors and to my young adults and happy Wednesday goes out to my littlest viewer who watches No Walls every Sunday. Um, so first of all, thank you so much to Ayana. She is a recent graduate of Georgia Southern University and so she has agreed to help me out a bit and so I appreciate her so much. Um, I want to say thank you all so much for giving, for praying, for watching, for reaching out to me. It means so much to know that people are supporting Jesus Christ and not me. I love that. I love the fact that it's about God and not about a person, a man, or in my case, a woman. I appreciate that so much. Um, but then for you guys to pray for um, me to uh, stay strong and to not grow weary, I appreciate that. When I'm not here, um, I am doing ministry um, with the prayer squad. So we have been able to help quite a few people. Um, and we've been able to help some young people as well over the past two weeks. So I appreciate you so much for hanging in there with us and for praying for us and with us. Um, I do need to say thank you so much to Reverend Melissa. If you have not watched Way Station, you probably need to watch it um, because you may be carrying a load that is too heavy <laughs> that you're not even supposed to have. Um, so please watch Way Station. I want to thank her so much. And thank you so much to Reverend James Shaw, who did uh, Growing in Faith uh, last week. Um, and I want to thank Pastor George Sappho of Basket Creek for allowing um, him to come and to minister um, in my stead. I appreciate that so much. Um, they both really ministered. They blessed me. So <laughs> I think you should go back and watch both messages. They, they will bless your soul. Um, so a lot has happened since we've been gone. Um, I get testimonies all the time and I'm going to apologize in advance to uh, Ms. Brenda Grissom because I did not get permission to share this but I'm going to share it anyways and I'm so 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 sorry and I hope it doesn't mess anything up and if it does reach out to me let me know and I'm asking you to forgive me. Um, but her testimony came um, and this past December she's over uh, Gertrude's house which is the breast cancer awareness organization and they do great things um, this past December. I think like on the 23rd they had made a decision to bless some of the survivors and they sent out 28 uh, blessings um, and the total when they finished sending them out was like $2,800 they had no problems doing it they were excited to do it um, not because they had a whole bunch of money in their funds they just wanted to bless people these people uh, these survivors during Christmas they did so uh, less than a week after they actually went out in the mail after these blessings went out in the mail that totaled like $2,800 um, she got a text message from someone else random and the text message said hey sending you a check the check is for twenty eight hundred dollars <laughs> she was like huh <laughs> like like whatever you pour out god's gonna restore or he's going to do more uh, than what you could even do because that's just who he is um and i had a friend of mine love her so much i love her so much and she and i had not talked for a couple of months and she says, you know, call me. And I gave her a call and I was like, uh, yeah. She was like, hey, um, the Holy Spirit told me to give something to you. And I was like, okay, let me have it. Because when my sister, Prophetess Hope Hall, says the Holy Spirit told me to give something to you, I mean, like, you better get into her bed because it's like lightning is about to come out the sky. So I was scared because I ain't talked to her in a while. And I was like, okay. I was like, in my mind, I was like, let me have it. And she was like, well, 
I know COVID, you know, whatever, I'll wear a mask. Can I come by your house? And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Then I was like, oh, goodness, I might need to go get some oil and some blankets and some... <laughs> um, because I thought she was going to impart words. But when she came to the door, she was like, here's $100. For what? She's like, for you. Specifically for you. Not no walls. This is not no walls. This is not your children, not your babies, not your car note, not any. This is for you. Like, like, like. I don't, I don't really do what the Holy Spirit tells me to do, but I felt compelled today to be obedient. Like I need to do, I need to start. That's my New Year's thing. I'm going to start doing what the Holy Spirit leads me to do. So she was acting in obedience. I'm acting in tears because I'm like, <laughs> why? I don't deserve this, you know? And I'm like, thank you, you know? And I sent her a text message because I genuinely prayed, God, what she gave to me, can you bless it? tenfold like like give it back to her more than what she gave to me and that very week that very week um she was going to move and the original charge they gave her was like four hundred dollars it turned out to be more and she decided i'm not gonna pay that i'm not going to pay that amount of money so she calls a local church that's in a different state because that's where she was moving the stuff and she says um Hey, pastor, not me, different pastor, totally different person. Um, I have $400 and I would like to donate it to a group of men, a group of young men, whoever in your church, if they could just come and help uh, me move. And the pastor says, no, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, we're not going to help you move. It was no, you're not going to give us anything. She's like, no, I'm not trying to get anything moved for Like, I got a lot of stuff. I'm going to pay somebody. I just want to be able to use some, I want to be able to take this money and bless a young person who doesn't have anything to do. You know, he said, absolutely not. Would not take her money. That, <laughs> so this woman who was obedient to the Holy Spirit days before that just said, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going to bless someone with a hundred dollars. She turns around and gets a $800 moving job done for free. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> when you are giving of your prayers, when you are giving of yourself, when you are giving of your finances, trust me, trust me. If you're led by the Holy Spirit to do it, God is going to restore everything that you pour out when you have the heart of Christ. We cannot outgive God. And I promise you, if you look back over your life at anything that you've been blessed with recently, you're going to see the hand of God in it, in all of it, you know. So um, I do want to say thank you and thank you to both of them for the testimony. And if you have a testimony, please share it with me. I would love to uh, share it with no walls because the, um, you know, the more testimonies we hear, the more it increases our faith. Um, our big thing in Bible study each week is if he did it before, not only can he do it again, but he will do it again. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the word of God. I'm excited today. I'm always excited, but this one is killer to me. Like, yes. Um, when Reverend Shaw ended his message last week, um, one of the things he ended it with, he started listing off these things. If God wanted us to have this, this is what he would have sent. If he wanted us to have this, this is what he would have sent. He said, if he wanted us to have money, he would have sent us an economist. Um, but, but we you know if he needed us, he said, if he needed us, if we need it, I'm sorry, I'm messing it all up. But if we need it, <laughs> he said, if we need enough money, he would have sent us an economist. He said, but we needed forgiveness. So he sent us a savior. And so today we're going to deal with forgiveness. Uh, it's a hard topic. Um, most of you probably don't want to hear it. If there's somebody that has hurt you deeply, you don't want to hear this message. Um, but I hope you listen to the end because because it's, it's forgiveness in a different way probably than what you've heard. I'm not going to be beating you over the head telling you to forgive. But I'm going to show you that we need to forgive. Um, if you look in Genesis, um, I know you're probably thinking, oh, you're not going to do the cross? Easter's coming up. <laughs> no. No, I'm not going to do the cross today. We're going to do Joseph today. Um, and hopefully in a way that you haven't heard that will rethink your um whether or not you want to forgive someone i hope that it causes you to forgive um so if you look at genesis 42 
And verse 24, 42, 24, it says, He turned away from them and began to weep, but then came back and spoke to them again. He had Simeon taken from them and bound before their eyes. And then in Genesis 45 and 2, it says, And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. So today's message very simply is, cry baby. No, not not cry baby. I'm not calling you a cry baby. <laughs> I'm saying go ahead and cry baby. It's okay. So cry baby. That's what I'm saying. Um so the story of Joseph is um a great story. Most of us know it. We've heard it. We've heard it a million times, a thousand times. We love it. We use it when we're talking about forgiveness. We talk about God's forgiving power. If we're not talking about Jesus, then the next person that we talk about is Joseph. Um, let me, of course, give you a little bit of context in case you've never heard the story or in case you um, don't quite know where it all fits in. Um, Joseph, let me, let me, I'm going to back up pretty far, but if you stay with me, it may make you go, ah, um, now if you've seen previous messages, some of this will be a repeat. If you're a scholar, some of this will be a repeat. If you've been in Sunday school your whole life, this will be a repeat. This is for that 1% or that one person that doesn't know. I'm hoping that this will open your eyes and I'm hoping that it will, um, encourage you to go read the Bible. Um, so let me tell you who Joseph actually is. Joseph is a son of Jacob's. He's Jacob's favorite son. Okay, he was. So we're going to back up really quick. I'm going to go fast, but I want you guys, just in case you don't know, so you know. You have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, I've done that before. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob is a twin. And Jacob was a twin to Esau. Jacob stole Esau's birthright. Um, after Jacob stole Esau's birthright, okay, um, because Esau was the firstborn, Jacob fled. His mom told him, you know, go. Jacob goes away, um, and Jacob... Uh, wants to marry uh, beautiful Rachel um, and his but it but her dad she had a sister named Leah uh, Leah is who the oldest was between Leah and Rachel the father said hey listen you have to marry the oldest well he tricked him he didn't say it but he just tricked him so Jacob ended up having to marry he tricked him into marrying Rachel I mean he tricked him into marrying Leah and then from there, he was like, but I really want Rachel. <laughs> okay, I'm married to Leah and I have a child by Leah, but I really want Rachel. Like, she's the beautiful one. She's the one. And the dad says, well, you got to work for me some more. So Jacob has to work some more. He eventually gets to uh, marry Rachel, but uh, Rachel is barren and she cannot have uh, babies. Um, of course, then, you know, Leah um, do not equate me with Leah, um, <laughs> cause our names are similar. <laughs> um, so Leah, you know, kind of flaunts the whole, ha ha, I have babies. You don't. Rachel says, here's my, my servant, take her and let's have some babies. So they have babies with the servant. Leah sends her servant. Okay, well fine. Then, you know, here's my servant. They go back and forth. So Leah's having babies. These servants are having babies. Rachel is not having a baby, but Rachel is who Jacob loves. Jacob loves Rachel. Beautiful. His soulmate, his other half, his person in life. That's who is Rachel. And so eventually Rachel gets pregnant. And she's told she's going to have two babies. So she has Joseph. And then eventually she's going to have Benjamin. So those two boys are Jacob's favorites. And they're his favorites because they are the sons specifically of Rachel who he deeply loves. You know, you can love people. You can enjoy being around them. <laughs> you can want to wake up with them every morning. But no, 
time this was like love like 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 you're my other half like like you're it you're my person and so that's how Jacob felt about Rachel so anything she produced anything she touched anything she was he loved it and so he loved these two boys more than Judah and all the other boys uh, Reuben all of them you know, like, oh, they didn't do a good job. They was out there playing. Daddy, they're da 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 And so he's, a, he's <laughs> in their eyes, is brat. <laughs> they're like, Joseph is a brat. <laughs> like, he's telling on us, and he has everything, and he doesn't have to work. And, you know, so the brothers already don't like him. And then he has the nerve. Uh, Joseph has the nerve, being his dad's favorite, telling on them, being a tattletale. He has the nerve to tell them about this dream that God had given to him. And the dream basically was, the interpretation of it was, there will come a day where brothers, y'all are gonna bow down to me. And they were like, what? <laughs> Who are you talking to? Like, I mean, Joseph, you're making it worse on yourself. So Joseph has a second dream. He tells a second dream. And the second dream, is like, mom and dad, dad, you're going to be bound, like, all y'all going to be bound down to me. And the dad's like, you know, slow down. <laughs> you're my favorite. I gave you a coat, but I'm going to need you to slow down just a tiny bit. You know, you're getting a little ahead of yourself. Um, and so Joseph, while he was the favorite, was also, you know, he was still human. He was not Jesus. He was not perfect. He was not this kid you know, free from getting on people's nerves. He was getting on everybody's, not everybody, but he was getting on his brother's nerves. Um, for those of you who don't know Jacob's name prior to this, prior to this story, Jacob's name was changed by God to Israel. So when we talk about the children of Israel, we're not talking about Israel, the location. We're talking about Israel, the person. I'm just showing you how it's the same person. So Jacob's name was changed. So he he became Israel. So Josh, so Joseph was a son of Israel, and so was Simeon, and so and so on, Reuben and all of them. And so that's kind of uh, where we get the children of Israel from. That's where we get the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes were named after his uh, sons, and I think even uh, grandsons, I think. Um, so you have the 12 tribes of um, Israel, and Israel is a person. Um, it, it, is, it is also a place, but it came from Jacob's name. So Joseph being a brat, his brothers are see him coming in the distance because his dad's like, go see what they're doing. Go see if they're working. He sends him out to go see and they plot and they plan uh, to kill him. They, they said, we've got to kill him. Because if we don't kill him, uh, if we kill him, then we ain't got to hear about it no more. But uh, Judah says, mm, I don't know if we should, uh, or Reuben, one of them says, I don't think we should kill him. We don't want um, his blood to be on our hands. Um, and our father would never forgive us. So we're just going to throw him in the cistern. And Reuben was like, yeah, we throw him in the cistern. In his mind, he was like, I'll come back and rescue him out and bring him back to dad. Uh, the more they thought about it, though, they eventually just sold him off into slavery. Um, this is deep because it's family. I know you've heard this preached before. I know. Because you've heard it preached before and it's coming back up again, you got to think about it. I've been hurt by family. Um, you think, you think, <laughs> sometimes you think, oh, my family. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Family members can still hurt you. And not hurt you like surface hurt, deep hurt, like deep hurt, like where you go back and say, why are you doing this to me? You know? Some of us have been hurt by family members and they're still living and breathing and moving. Some of us have been hurt by family members and they have gone on. Um, and we find ourselves stuck in that hurt, unable to forgive. Um, but today we're going to talk about forgiveness 
and restoration. Like it is important for us to forgive and to restore lovingly. And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, I heard a great, great analogy of, of forgiveness and restoration. So um, if I let you drive my car and because you need to borrow it, like you've got to get somewhere and, and I let you borrow it and you, you are at fault in a car accident and you wreck my vehicle, right? Um, you may be taking it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so think about your car. Now, if you have a really, 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 really nice car, think about letting someone borrow your extremely nice new car and they wreck it. Think about your car holding on by a limb, but it's the only thing you can afford and it's the only thing you have and they go and they wreck it and you can't drive this vehicle anymore. And they do so recklessly, like, like, like they're just out there being crazy and they wreck your vehicle. Forgiveness says, don't worry about it. My insurance will pay for it, which means my insurance rate will go up, which means I've got to now go buy another car. I've got to take on some new car. Like, I forgive you. Just, I forgive you. Don't worry about it. Restoration says, <laughs> I got another car. <laughs> you need to borrow it? Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> The forgiveness now becomes a little bit easier when you think about we need to restore these people too, lovingly. And restoration says, not only do I forgive you for what you did, <laughs> but if you need to borrow my next car, <sighs> go ahead. Forgiveness and restoration. Um, so in this story, Joseph goes through a ton. He goes through, and, and, and not in the Bible, not, not Joseph, but you as Joseph. I'm talking to you as Joseph. You go through um, a family fight. Uh, it could be with a sibling. Um, it could be with a spouse. Um, church hurt is very real. Uh, my friend who I was telling you about moving, her daughter um, had experienced uh, hurt from the church. Uh, the church had let her down. Um, and I used to think church hurt wasn't real. Oh, it's real. <laughs> church folks will hurt you <laughs> in a heartbeat. Um, you could experience church hurt. You could experience hurt on your job. Um, there's all kinds of deep hurt. Uh, family could cheat you out of something. They could lie on you. Uh, adultery. Um, you could lose. You know, there's just so many things that can hurt you. And here Joseph is, 17 year old kid, alone. Apart from his mom and dad, he, he'll never see his mom again. Apart from his dad, apart from his brothers, apart from his bed, apart from his home, apart from everything. Just imagine that for a minute, being 17, not going away and you can come back, going away and you're never going back home. You're never going back home. That is it. And that was Joseph. And we don't know. We don't know how many times he cried. We don't know if he cried every day. We don't know if he cried every month. We do know that things started to look up. We know that he was uh, admired, raised into position. We know after his brothers lied about his death, we know that uh, Potiphar's wife lied about um, him trying to attack her. And he was thrown into prison. Um, we know that he stayed in prison for two years. That's a long, 30 minutes is a long time to be arrested and put in jail. Two years in jail. Wouldn't be in jail if he was at home with his dad, with his brothers. So even though Potiphar's wife is the one that accused him, he's in jail because he's in a foreign land because of what his siblings did to him. And eventually he gets out and he gets elevated. And let me, let me 
Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the story. And so, uh, there's a fan, there's Joseph has a dream. He knows that there's going to be seven years of plenty and he knows there's going to be seven years of famine. He knows this and he says, Hey, this is what's going to happen. So he goes around and he collects all this grain to store. Um, so that when the famine comes, there will be more than enough in the storehouse. Um, which is also why we give tithes. We store it away so that if you ever find yourself in a dry place or in a famine, you personally, um, then you would be able to come to the storehouse and we would be able to provide you with meat. So so tithing is important. Um, and that's in essence what they were doing. They were just putting away for the famine. And their father, Jacob, Israel, is back at home and when they're running out of food he says 10 brothers because there were 12 of them all together uh benjamin was the baby and benjamin wasn't going nowhere he said listen don't just sit here what y'all doing go to egypt and get some food like take this money like why are y'all just like the food is not going to just appear go get some food now there's no social media no tv no radio no none of that so they don't know what has happened to their brother for all they know he's sold off he's dead he's in jail he's somewhere he's wandering he's nothing because he's a 17 year old kid and he's a slave so they don't expect to see uh, joseph at all but when they get to egypt um to buy grain joseph turns and immediately recognizes his brothers but they don't know who he is they they don't know that it's their brother. Um, and, you know, he's like, what are y'all here for? Oh, y'all are just spies. But, but the Bible says that Joseph remembered his dream, which means he remembered there would come a time because they were wheat in his dream. They were, they, were, uh, they were wheat in his dream. And so he's remembering his dream going, oh, wait a minute. This is it. Oh. But he plays with them. Oh, y'all are just here to spy on me. They eventually convince him, no. And they say, there were 12 of us. There's 10 of us here now. We've lost one of our brothers and the baby is back home with our father. You know, because they go through this whole thing. And Joseph decides, um, he puts them to this test. And the test really is to see, have you changed? Would you, ha, ha, are y'all, are y'all really okay? Are y'all better? Are y'all the same crooked brothers that I once knew? Um, and the Bible says that he turned and he wept or he cried. And the first million times that I read this, okay, he cried, he cried, he cried, he cried. Um, but then I realized why, why is he crying? And that question, that answer, I don't know. But Joseph cried and he said, I'm going to send you away with grain. But that younger brother, he's got to come back with y'all. And they were like, huh? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you got to bring him back. And I'm going to keep one of your brothers here to ensure that you come back next time with the youngest one. And Simeon is the one I believe that uh, he took. He took him and uh, bound him and they returned home to Jacob and says, listen, if we go back, we've got to go back. We're going to run out of food, but we got to take Benjamin. And I think it was Reuben and Reuben was like, and Jacob was like, no, y'all lost Joseph <laughs> in the fields a long time ago. I lost Joseph. Y'all just got Simeon taken. I know I'm not going to lose my second favorite son. I'm not losing Benjamin. He cannot go. And so Simeon stayed. They noticed that Joseph had put their money back. He gave them their money back. And Judah steps forward later once all the grain is gone. Judah. That's important. Remember Judah. Judah says, Dad, listen. We're going to all die. All of us. We're good, we're, we're good as dead. We have got to go back with Benjamin and listen on my life. My. I will ensure. I promise to bring Benjamin back to you. I promise. But we are going to die of hunger if we don't go get more food. And we've got to have Benjamin with us 
even in order to get Simeon, we got to all be there. And Jacob says, if he doesn't come back, I will die. If Benjamin doesn't return, I will die. And they take Benjamin. And when they get back and Joseph sees Benjamin, he plots again. He puts everything in their bag. He gives them the grain. But this time he takes his cup, his cup, Joseph's, you know, royal cup. And he puts it in Benjamin's bag specifically. It was it was on purpose. He's trying to trick them. He's not really trying to trick them. He's trying to find out. Will these brothers give up my dad's favorite son a second time? Have they changed? When it was me, they, they gave me up for slavery. So I need to make sure that they really have changed. So he puts this cup into Benjamin's bag and they go off. And then he sends his police officers after them to say, hey, you all have stolen from Joseph. And they're like, no, we didn't. We didn't steal from him. We would never. And they said, if we have, because the police officers basically like, so one of y'all has his cup. Y'all stole his cup. And they're like, we have it. And the brothers say, listen, whichever one of us, we didn't do it. And we're so sure you're not going to find it. We're so confident that you can take that person back, kill him, put him into slavery, whatever you want to do. That's how confident we are that we did not take that cup. Because they knew they didn't take it. They did not take it. Uh, Joseph put it in their bag to trick them. So they, they were confident. We don't have it. So they open all the bags, starting with the oldest to the youngest, to Benjamin. And nobody had it until they got to Benjamin. And he was like, I, I knew it. I knew someone took his cup. And the brothers are like, no, <laughs> we can't do this again. <laughs> And so they all return. They don't just send Benjamin back to Joseph. They all go back to Joseph. And they are like, we, you don't understand. We can't go back to Jacob, to Israel, our father Israel, <laughs> without him. Like, 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 so Judah, that's important. Judah steps forward. And Judah says, listen, take me. I, 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 whatever the cost, whatever the price, I will pay it. But Benjamin, he can't pay this cost. I have to be the one. He's got to go back to the father. I promised the father that if we came down to this situation, that I would give my life in exchange for his. That's what Judah said. And then the Bible says that Joseph wept again. He cried again. Again, I don't know why he cried. Because for us, we, we, when you first cry because your sister hurt you or your brother hurt you or the church hurt you or your family hurt you or your job that he hurt you somebody your dad hurt you your mom hurt you somebody hurt you deep your best friend like your road dog hurt you and so the first tears are anger from the hurt and and, and even like what did i do to you like why <laughs> and you begin to cry out that's the first first tears are anger then it's like why that's the second tears. And then it's like, they're getting away with it. See, Joseph, all this time, his brothers were getting away with it. They got to stay with their dad. They got to be with their father. They got to live a life. They got to get married. Like, they had a life. And sometimes you look at people that hurt you and you go, how is it that they're getting away with it? And you know what the Word of God says? It's fret not when it looks like the evil like the wicked are getting away with it for in due season. Not, trust me, <laughs> they're not getting away with it. <laughs> they look like they're getting away with it, but it's, it's a plan. God has a plan for it. Um, and so I don't know why he was crying. 
And the second time that he began to cry was almost, the way I read it and could feel it was almost like, okay, God, okay, I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to restore them and I'm going to do it because you've been good to me because this was your plan because what they meant for my evil was really intended to save the whole okay and I think those tears may have been of release he hugged them again and cried there's another scripture after that where he reveals himself hey look I'm your brother and they're like huh <laughs> what which brother you're Joseph <laughs> what cry baby release it let it go let it out let that forgiveness just be purified cry don't let people tell you walk it out i don't want to walk <laughs> walk it out no praise it out no i i, I don't want to do those things okay then cry it out cry baby go ahead it's okay cry it keeps saying that joseph wait it was cleansing for him for him to get to not just forgiveness but restoration because he says listen but don't worry about what you did i'm not just gonna pardon you see a pardon is what trump was giving out <laughs> pardons are look you did it you guilty you know oh you did it oh you did it and we're gonna remember you did it and you know what nobody's gonna like you because you was wrong you guilty pardon but when you're exonerated <laughs> it's just like you didn't do it at all and that was the restoration like you never did it it never happened i'm gonna forget about it a lot of us can pardon but it's difficult for us to exonerate people it is difficult for us to say it never happened but there is one who came there is one uh such person God, who took on the form of man to exonerate us. There is no, there's nothing called the sea of forgetfulness. I know people say, you know, he will throw your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. That's not a, such a sea that doesn't exist. It's not even in scripture. Now there is a scripture that says he will throw your sins into the depths of the sea. That is in scripture. It is said that he will, he will uh, forgive the wicked and, and, and um, he will remember your sins no more. That's him saying, not only will I forgive you, um, but the blood is going to restore you. And so it never happened. I, I won't even look at you. I'll look upon my son, Jesus, when you sin and you repent from that sin. Um, but before we could even get to restoration, we got to cry it out. It's okay. It's okay. Um, in Proverbs, I believe. <laughs> I believe Solomon said, or maybe Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes, yeah, Ecclesiastes. There is a time and a place and a season for everything. And there is a time to mourn. And it's a time to let those things die. Whatever they did to you. I know, trust me, trust me. I can't give my testimony. I wish I could, but I cannot. Um, my testimony will get so many people in trouble, I cannot give it. But trust me, I've been hurt <laughs> deeply, like piercing hurt. <sighs> piercing hurt by people. Not one person, a whole slew of them. <laughs> Not just one incident, a whole, like, I can't. But let me tell you, um, it was traumatic. But I had to forgive. I had to literally say, wait a minute. Wait, this is not a surprise to God. He already knew this was going to happen. And I thought about what Joseph said, what your intentions are. Your intentions are <laughs> to get rid of me. <laughs> That's your intentions. Your purpose is to hurt me, to harm me, to send me on my way so that hopefully I will be killed, not physically, but spiritually. Your goal was to kill me. But God is set it up for my good, not to get back at them, not to go, nah, 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 boo, boo, ha. no, 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 um, but God was establishing my future. 
and your hurt pushed me in a direction for God to be a blessing, a bigger blessing to me in my life. And once I realized he was growing my faith, once I understood that, I could forgive. And, and it, as hard as it was, restore. Restoration means, you know, never happened. Ah, whatever. Is that easy? No. <laughs> you know, Jesus like, hey, you got to forgive. How many times? Seven. No, you know what? Seventy-seven times. Seven times seventy. Seven million. Like, I don't even care. His point is every time that hurt arises, forgive. Every time you think about it, every time it crosses your mind, because you're human, it'll cross your mind. Forgive. Forgiveness is simply this. It's not really forgetting that it happened. Forgiveness is not holding it against them anymore. Forgiveness is giving up your right to be angry and to hold it against them. See, I have the right to be mad. I have a right. I can prove it. But <laughs> I gave up my right for the grace of God on my life, for God's mercy for me. I need his mercy and I need his grace. I need his forgiveness for things that I've done or said or thought. And so, you know what? Hey, <laughs> whatever you said or did or thought towards me, gone. Let me throw a disclaimer in there really, really quick. If you're in an abusive relationship, I'm not telling you to forgive them and to restore them, especially not if you're still in it. Injustice is wrong and it's wrong all day long. If you notice in this story, Joseph was abused by his brothers. They hurt him. He didn't just say, oh, I forget. Hey, I forgive y'all. That didn't just happen that way. He tested them. He tested them to see when another one of my dad's favorites is going to be turned over to death. Will you all save yourselves as you did before? And when Judah stepped forward, he realized they were changed. Yes, you should forgive people, but I'm not telling you to restore, to forgive and restore people who are abusing you or who are doing you wrong. That is an injustice and you need to seek help for that. So, so don't misunderstand forgiveness. But some of you are holding on to stuff that you cannot change. It happens, past tense. And God wants you to be freed from that. He's trying to bless you and grow you. He's trying to show them that it was intended for your good, but you're stuck. I saw this quote that said, some people take trouble and they grow wings. Some people take trouble and they go by crutches. <laughs> like they, you know, like they don't, they don't want to move. They don't want to grow. They don't want to fly. They don't want to get beyond it. They want to stay in that hurt. They want to go, guess what they did to me? But you don't understand. You didn't live. Okay. Nobody's ever, no one's going to understand what I went through. I'm not going to understand what you went through. It's a fact. What you went through is your hurt. What I went through is my hurt. But we have to forgive. And it's going to be a lifelong journey of learning how to restore. That's what makes Jesus die on the cross so powerful that he was innocent. And he let people who thought they were in power. He allowed them. He, he was like a lamb. He laid down his life. And then he raised it back up. But he laid down his life. The reason why I kept telling you to remember Judas. Because I just thought this was really, really cool. Uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. Just a side note. 12 tribes of Israel. I just. <laughs> before I was ministering. I was like, you know. We compared the story of Joseph. As a foretelling of what Jesus is going to do for us that he's going to forgive us of our sins because he's going to say this is for my God for my father to get glory I'm doing it to save you remember Joseph said I had to come I had to be elevated I had to be hurt and bruised and then elevated so that you all would not die so that there would be food God was preparing me for that and and we compare that and say well that's what happened to Jesus. He, he had to go through. He was mistreated and he was abused and he had to go through so many things. So then he would be elevated up on the cross, die and be raised up and go live again at the right hand of the Father so that we would not die eternally. 
So I was like, that's really, that's, that's kind of cool. But so why, <laughs> why is Jesus the lion of Judah? I get it. Now remember the 12 tribes are his sons, the, the names of his sons. So each of them have a, a tribe. And I'm like, why wasn't Jesus in the tribe of Joseph? You mean, you know, like, come on, God. Like if Joseph was the precursor, like, like Joseph was showing us the redemptive power of Jesus and how he's going to do us when we throw him into the pit because we don't want to go to church. We throw him into the pit because we don't want to hear about it. We want to stay in our feelings and be mad. Like, why is he not from the tribe of Joseph? I don't understand. But in that story, it was Judah who stepped forward <laughs> and said, I will exchange my life for my brothers. Whatever the penalty, oh, whatever the penalty that Benjamin has to suffer, even if it's death for his wrongdoing, though I am innocent, I will take it on. Oh, what? Okay, Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay, Lion of Judah. Okay, Jesus. And Judah, like Joseph, received many blessings from his father Israel before his death. Yeah, that's a pretty good lineage to come from, Jesus. Okay, I see. <laughs> but cry. You don't have to walk it out. In your tears, praise will naturally come out when you cry out to God. You don't have to just start praising. When you just start saying, I'm hurt, God. I'm hurt, God. They hurt me, God. He's close to the brokenhearted. He's close. That's when he's closest to us. He's closest to us when we are humble. It's when we're weak that he's strong. Cry. It is okay. If you're a guy, <laughs> cry. <laughs> Joseph was a man, a strong, powerful man. And yet the Bible says that he wept. And it says he wept so loud that the Egyptians could hear him. That was that pain. It was a release. I challenge you, don't just cry, release it. Don't cry and stay in it. I am not telling you to swim around in a puddle of tears. <laughs> I'm telling you to make sure that there's a Holy Spirit drain. So when you cry, those tears go right down that drain to the Holy Spirit. And that you lay all of that at his feet. That you can restore people. I have family members that, um, I have a family member who hurt me. And um, the most beautiful thing in the world. So unexpected. So unexpected. So beautiful. So healing. So just everything they don't even know that I forgave them but I'd already forgiven them and already just let it go and I got this text message out of the blue that said hey I'm sorry what <laughs> huh <laughs> unexpected and it wasn't just I'm sorry it was I hurt you and 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 I shouldn't have and I'm sorry for that hey <laughs> what Let it go. Cry, baby. But then let it go. Prayer squad, we have uh, snack bowls. And, and, and <laughs> they're really self-pity bowls. <laughs> and these bowls, we can dump whatever we want in them. Macaroni and cheese, ice cream, Cheetos, whatever it is. But they are there because when you're feeling self-pity and you're in that moment, Put whatever you want in that bowl, eat it. But then when it's gone, that's it. You cannot use that bowl again. We have one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one member who abuses it. I'm like, whoa, 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 just once a day. <laughs> Actually, it's like once a month or once every two months. Like, it should have cobwebs in it. What are you doing? <laughs> it should have dust in the bowl. But no, she uses it so often. We've had to try to confiscate the bowl. But, but cry it out and forgive and then restore them. And the restoration part will take time. Don't think when this message is over, you'll forgive and restore. Let's do the forgiveness part first. Don't hold it against them. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is you did it, you were wrong, but I'm not gonna hold it against you. And don't call them and tell them that either. <laughs> That's for you to know. <laughs> and let it go. And then watch what God does. It will amaze you. 
If you don't know who Jesus Christ is and you want so badly to be forgiven, to know who the Savior is, it is not too late. Um, you can go to knowwallsnowwhat.com and uh, if you scroll down, uh, the best decision you ever made was to accept Jesus Christ. If you click on the link, it'll help you with your walk through. Um, you can always reach out to me, to Reverend Melissa. Um, we will be glad to pray with you and for you. You can email us at nowallsnowwhat at gmail.com. Um, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just saying thank you so much for being our dad. Thank you. It amazes me that you are both the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Like you reign and you rule and you're sovereign and you're so powerful and yet you are our daddy. Which means we can come boldly before you. I just want to say thank you so much for this day that you have made that we can rejoice and be glad in it. God, we are struggling with the same forgiving power that you have for us, God. We ask that you would pour it out on us, God. Just pour out your spirit on us, God, so that we would love people in spite of what they do. Your word says, do good to those who do you harm and wrong, God. That requires forgiveness and restoration, and we cannot do it in our humanness. So we bow before you humbly, God, asking you to help us with that. And God, I ask that you would heal right now. Everyone who has reached out to the prayer squad, God, in need of healing, you know their names. God, I ask right now that you would heal them. I ask that you would comfort all of those who are experiencing sorrow and loss in their life. God, I ask that you would do a new thing with everyone listening to No Walls, God, everyone associated with No Walls. God, I ask that you do a new thing in this world and in this community. These and all other blessings we ask in your precious and mighty son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to give a shout out really quick to my friend, Pastor Mark, uh, Life Church in North Carolina, um, to you and First Lady Amy and little Ethan. I love you guys so much. I want to thank you all so much for your continued prayers and support. Um, they do have this year, their theme is hashtag dreams. Um, and so those of you who would like to join them, I think it's a phenomenal, um, uh, Theme. I know it was given to them by the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm going to connect with them and see um, how we can be a part of Hashtag Dream, Dreams. And I hope that you will join us in that effort. I love you all so much. Um, Valentine's Day is next weekend. I know Super Bowl is today, but Valentine's next weekend. So men, it's okay if the women forget, but y'all better not forget. <laughs> all right, I love you. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.